as you uh, come on. Um, I'll start this live here in a couple of minutes. I'm going to share the link to the other platforms, and then we will uh, talk about the the weather that's coming up and um, kind of what what the data is showing, what what things look like on satellite, and a possible better chance at a major winter storm to end the week. So I'm going to share this. And then I, as I get later into the video, and I'll cover this again because technically I'm not starting till noon, but I, I'll cover this again, but I'll, I'll try to answer some questions uh, once I go over the, the data stuff. So uh, give me here just a couple of minutes to get this shared to the other platforms, and then uh, we'll get going. Those of you who are just joining here in some uh, silence here, I'm sharing this uh, this link to the uh, other platforms real quick, and then we'll get going here at noon. Uh, I'm just sitting in my living room. I've uh, got the dogs in here. Grandfather clock will probably go off right at noon. Um, so, you know, if the wind blows wrong outside, you might hear the dogs barking. Uh, again, you'll hear the grandfather clock go off here at noon. And once it's done, uh, we'll get going. I'm just sharing this to... Uh, to Twitter and uh, Patreon won't share the Facebook link, so I'm gonna have to figure out something different in the future. So, if, uh, hopefully, most of the Patreon people also have have Facebook, but. Yeah, gotta be smarter than my stuff here. Okay. All right, we'll let this, um, I'll just stop whenever the grandfather clock uh, chimes. So, um, and I'll, I'll try to watch on, on my, I've got two phones going here. So again, for those of you who are just joining, um, I will be watching on a, watching on my second phone as we get later into this, uh, into this live. I'm going to try to keep it around a half an hour or so, but uh, as we get into this, I will try to, uh, I'll try to answer some uh, questions for, uh, for you. So, hey, Becky and Kobe and, um, Again, hello to all of you here. So uh, again, the grandfather clock's getting ready to go off. So I'm going to wait to really tackle the, uh, get into the uh, meat of what's going on. And for once this gets going, but uh, Ray Redding wants lots of snow for a snowmobile. Well, uh, Becky, he might have to wait until this coming weekend for that. Cause what's coming is kind of, unless he's going to go out and snowmobile at three o'clock in the morning, uh, Tuesday, uh, it's probably going to turn into a slushy mess you know, by the time normal people are up. I'm sure you might, uh, some neighbors might appreciate him snowmobiling at three o'clock in the morning. So, um, a few more seconds here for this clock to go off. Kind of got an awkward setup here, so here we go.
All right. Now that we got the grandfather clock out of the way, um, so welcome to all of you. Um, this is Micah Mitchell, and i uh, tuning in here to Madison County Weather Updates. want to take a look at the upcoming system. It really it looks like a mess. Um, I've been ex the storm really is just just on the shore. It's uh, just getting sampled. So if there are going to be any changes in data, it's probably going to happen, you know, in the, the next six to 12 hours. Um, but uh, we're looking here at a at satellite and uh, our, our storm system is coming on out here in the southwest now. And it, it'll begin to move track across. And the, the big question is like right now you can see the, where the dry air is. The northern side of that is kind of the existing uh, storm track, which would... Uh, really would take the uh, storm across the uh, to the south but there there's a, it's hard to see on this because of the color that uh, college of DePage uses for the pressure lines but there's a surge of pressure that's kind of going up here which would indicate that one the storm is intensifying and it's beginning to wrap yeah you see the good circulation right here and the question becomes uh, all of the data is really um, they're sticking with this being a low, deep low pressure with a center pressure somewhere in the 983, 984 millibar uh, range by the time it's uh, passing our area. That does happen. It hasn't happened in years. And um, they were forecasting the same thing back in December. If you remember back in early December, there was a uh, storm system that the all of the models, I mean, up to 12 hours before the storm happened, they had them taking this really hard turn, putting heavy snow down in Iowa, uh, northwestern Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, parts of western Michigan. I thought it was going to go farther southeast because I didn't believe the deeper pressures. So where I thought it was going to go was going to be more into northwestern Indiana, northeastern Illinois, and on into Michigan. And it turned out even I had the pressure too deep. It ended up being a lot less intense than what was modeled, and it tracked well off to the south, and all the heavy snow actually hit Ohio and Pennsylvania. So that's, you know, as we get that close to these storms, the, the data really, when I, I'm a little skeptical when they want to create this uh, really deep low pressure, again, they do happen. And the deeper the pressure is, the more prone they are to want to turn uh, poleward or toward the north and northeast. So uh, I'll, I'll show you the solutions that the models have uh, based on those deeper pressures. And uh, it'll be a mess. We will still be impacted by it in a wintry way. It's just a matter of uh, the order is going to be kind of weird. So um, we'll get. let's take a look here and we'll start with... Uh, the GFS model. And we're looking at tropical tidbits. I don't know why that's highlighting that. Let me turn this thing off. I've got a very awkward setup I'm working with here. I don't think anybody wants to look at the skew T on that. So okay, we'll we'll start off with the GFS on a regional view. And you can see is a we're getting into uh tomorrow afternoon, the storm's beginning to take shape. You're, uh, you can see the strong uh, separation between the the rain and the snow. Uh, that's uh, beginning to affect Missouri, and this is as modeled. Again, I, I suspect this is actually going to be farther south, but I could be dead wrong. So we'll show you how how the models are handling this stuff. And uh, let me tip this just a little bit. So there's the GFS for uh, again again into tomorrow evening, and then what what's interesting is the GFS then is where it, this is about two o'clock in the morning and at one o'clock in the morning, actually. And of course, Madison County is right here about where that tag is. And uh, it's got what the GFS has is basically a rain snow separation running somewhat along I-70 with heavy, heavy snow to the north and then heavy rain then coming in here to the south and southwest of us as this uh, low pressure begins to track in. So it does this early on in the uh, setup. And again, just very heavy snow. Madison County sitting just into the, uh, into the heavy snow part with the heavy rain to the south. And uh, but again, the cutoff line is super sharp as modeled. It's super sharp. And so 
then as we head, and this is about five o'clock in the morning, that it's really between about one and five in the morning, it's really thumping our area with snow. And then um, as we move on, then by the time we're getting to, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, it then transitions it to rain. And again, the, the color coding is really hard to see, but at this point, it, the GFS has, it says a 986 uh, millibar low pressure system. Again, I, I I just think it's too deep. And of course, they're, once it turns north, they, they deepen it even more and turn that storm even harder north. But so what the GFS is giving us is four to five inches of snow between about, you know, one in the morning and say six in the morning, and then transition it over to some rain and a dry slot as this low pressure begins to wrap up. And low pressure begins to wrap up, and then it wants to, again, you'll see the GFS wants to head this thing north. Here's later in the day. Look how hard north that turned that. You know, before it was down, three hours before, it's down here in the uh, southern Illinois, and now it just drives it almost straight north, pumps in some uh, heavy rain into our area, maybe even some thunder, and uh so then you then if you put down four or five inches of rain, I mean four or five inches of snow, then you warm the temperatures up and you bring heavy rain in it. That turns the roads into an absolute slushy mess. And it would be absolutely no fun to drive on. The GFS is doing that right around the time most people are driving to work. And as some you know, third shifters will be driving home from work. So if this model solution plays out, it's not going to be any fun to drive whatsoever Tuesday morning. And then, again, as modeled, we would then warm up um, into the upper 30s, lower 40s, which, again, we'll be working on the snow melt and, and you know, make the roads even slushier. It's also going to, once as the snow melts and you rain on it, it's also going to want to maybe create a lot of ponding in the roads. So that would be another hazard that would uh, develop as this system uh, moved itself on. Then as we get later into the day, again, we get more of a dry slot pumping in. It's now down to a 981 millibar low, painting all the heavy snow way out here across northwestern Illinois and uh, across Iowa exactly like it did back in, uh, back in December. And again, with that storm in December, they, they painted this hard turn and the heavy snow back here, and it really ended up tracking way out here, and the heavy snow ended up being well to our east. And as I recall, I don't think we even got rain out of that system, let alone any snow. So that's, that's a risk I want you to keep in mind. Again, I'm showing you what data is showing because it's been so consistent about it across every model. So, you know, I would be uh, not doing you a service to not tell you what the model data is doing. So um, this is by you know, 1 o'clock Monday afternoon. Then we move on, and uh, here we are about 4 o'clock Monday afternoon, and the GFS has us really not picking up much of anything at this point as the low pressure begins to move off more towards Chicago. And then it kind of stalls it out a little bit as we get into the evening, and then it begins to move it kind of eastward. So it's kind of given us a track up and then kind of over. And and we have seen that happen before. Uh, there was a storm back in 2015 that literally it, it came across. It got just off of the, uh, down by Evansville. It turned hard north, got up just to the north. It was like it was tracing the Indiana state line. So we've seen it before. So uh, as we move on then, we begin to get backside snow as the cold air moves in. And that backside snow, the temperatures will drop. So you're going to have really wet roads. The temperatures will drop. Most of the roads, it, again, as modeled, if we get up into the 40s, the, the, now the snowpack on the roads, and you begin to melt that, you know, off in the rain, it will make the roads colder than what the air temperature is. It will drop them down closer to freezing. So then as we drop below freezing you know, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and we put a little bit of snow on it, and we could have some black ice problems. Bridges, <clears throat> excuse me, untreated bridges definitely will be something that will be at risk as we go Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. But uh, hopefully by then the uh, the road crews, at least on all the major roads, will be out and they'll have uh, taken care of these roads. So we're this is looking at 1 o'clock Wednesday morning, 
4 o'clock Wednesday morning, 7 o'clock Wednesday morning, and 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. By that point, it's moving most of the snowfall out. And uh, so, this, again, this is a GFS take on it. And we'll come back to the GFS uh, here shortly and take a look. Well, heck, let's just do it now while it's up. So that that's the GFS's look at how the storm Tuesday and the Wednesday would play out. Again, it's putting down four or five inches of snow between about one o'clock and maybe six o'clock in the morning, Tuesday morning, then changing that over very quickly to moderate to heavy rain on top of that snow, warming temperatures. Again, that's going to make travel treacherous. Um, we'll see how things look tomorrow once the storm is fully sampled, but if it plays out the way the models are showing, I would expect uh, school delays Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, because and that is going to be no fun to drive on. Yeah, even if they come through and plow roads, it's going to, it's still going to be a mess. So um, I would, at this point, again, given saying the models do, that it does what the models say, anticipate delays, if not, maybe even some closures, especially the farther north you are. If any of you are watching from, you know, Grant County or Howard County, I almost would expect some closures and on Tuesday, just because it's going to be so treacherous trying to trying to get to the schools. It won't be so bad coming home, but trying to get to the schools. So again, expect some delays, I would say, Tuesday morning at the very least. Since we're on the GFS, let's go ahead and roll this thing out and take a look at the weekend um, for the snow lovers here. There's an impulse that would move off to our north. That's on Thursday. As, as we're moving on, we begin to see our next storm system begin to inject itself. And one thing that's been happening is temperatures have been running cooler than what's been modeled. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. But uh, we're getting into, now here we are again, this is about one o'clock Friday morning. And we're seeing this uh, nose of a new system uh, begin to work in. And every now and then we get a system where it's kind of elongated and uh, precipitation gets thrown out way ahead of the low pressure system. And it kind of hits a boundary and overrides that boundary or overruns it. And that's kind of what the GFS is projecting. And based on what happened in the Bering Sea uh, about a week and a half ago, I think this is pretty legitimate. So that's probably the only reason I'm going to show you this this far ahead. Because as you all know, I'm not a big fan of uh, using the models too much to forecast, but more for visual purposes. But so here we are Friday morning. Here we are about six o'clock Friday morning. Again, Madison County sitting right at this point. It's got us as as rain with the snow with snow developing up to the north. But as we progress on, we'll have a front that's going to drop in as we get into the day. And so we're we're at rainfall. This is into the late morning. Now here we are sitting at about four o'clock Friday afternoon. And now you can see the main part of the storm coming. This is all just along a front. But now we're seeing the main part of this storm system come. And as the way it's going to track, you can see as it picks up uh, Gulf moisture. Again, we're Madison County is sitting right on this border, kind of on the snow side of the border, but you know, uh, you know, a few miles either way can make a big difference. But the, the lead part of this storm is not the story. You can see the really heavy snow beginning to develop back here behind this low pressure. As we move on, by the time we hit about 1 o'clock, you know, it was about midnight to 1 o'clock Saturday morning, this storm now turns into there's the, your low pressure sitting down here uh, in a perfect spot for a perfect track for central Indiana snowstorms and northern Indiana snowstorms. And... It's tracking off in a perfect area. We've got a supply of cold air. You see how tight all these black lines are right here? That is a problem. So uh, again, now here we are, let's move on. And we're getting into uh, later into Saturday morning. And again, heavy, heavy snow across central Indiana, north central Indiana. And then as this low pressure drives off, it begins to make a similar turn it just uh, makes the turn a little bit later. And then we have a lot of backside snow and you see all these uh, 
these are uh, pressure gradients or ISO bars. The more of those you have, the windier it is. And you, we can see we've got seven or eight of those across Indiana. If this plays out the way the GFS is laying this out, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have to take a drink of water real quick. Sorry about that. So if this plays out the way GFS is laying it out, and again, the way things happened in the North Pacific about a week and a half ago, I think this has merit. This is a blizzard. So, you know, on this page, I don't throw that word around much. If this plays out the way the GFS has it, or even close to the way the GFS has it, this would be a blizzard. And this would bring a heavy, a heavy snow event along with it. I think it's a good time to point out, um, by definition, a blizzard. In this case, it would come with heavy snow, but you do not need heavy snow to have a blizzard. I think people think that in order to, that, well, we got two inches of snow, it's not a blizzard. You can get one inch of snow, and if you got winds that are sustained at 35 miles per hour, frequent gusts, 35 miles per hour or more for more than three hours, it's a blizzard. So in this case, we would have the winds and we would have the heavy snow. So as we're, and what we're starting to see is the storm track is beginning to shift south. We're beginning this cold blast that we were waiting on really kind of this week is just in the delayed, not denied category. Behind this storm, we're going to get a lot colder and uh, that's going to last at least several days. So be prepared for that as well, that as this storm goes through, uh, Friday, or really for us, the snow impacts would be on Saturday. Um, but again, wind, high winds, and then we'll be dealing with some frigid temperatures behind this storm. So there are several impacts that would come with this storm uh, late week. Again, it's, it's six days away, so a lot can change. But again, based on the pattern that went through the Bering Sea before, I, I think this one has merit. And then, so then backtracking to the one Tuesday and Wednesday, I still kind of think once everything gets sampled fully, we'll see some of the uh, pressures change in the uh, modeling. And which makes me think I do want to go to the HRRR model. It's a high resolution model. And uh, let me see if I can do this here. All right, so I'm going to take a look at the HRRR because, uh, again, higher resolution. I want to show you something on this. As we, uh, This only goes out so far because uh, every six hours, the HRRR will go out uh, 48 hours. So we've got something similar on the HRRR as what the GFS has for Tuesday. You can see the onset of... Uh, moderate to heavy snow as the storm system begins to track in. As we get a little later on, you can see it's it's just painting kind of a, by this point, this is, it, the triple R is a little faster. It begins to put the snow down late tomorrow evening and into early Tuesday, which would actually be a better scenario because that would give time for roads to be dealt with before rush hour. But uh, it has a similar scenario as the GFS where it paints heavy snow first and then it follows up. This is as far out as it goes. So you can see all the heavy snow that it was painting. This is down to uh, about 7 a.m. So it, it's, it has an onset that's sooner, but I guess uh, actually it's uh, keeping the heavier snow around later. So it actually would be a worse scenario. But... Uh, the heavy the heavy rain begins to surge north. The thing that that I would note on this is a triple R is nine eighty nine millibar, so so it's not as deep as what the GFS is, and so that may be the first indication that the storm's not going to be as deep and intense as what the um, lower resolution global models like GFS and European and Canadian think. So we'll see how that plays out again as as the day goes on, but. Uh, so just a real quick recap here, and then I'll, I'll look and see if I can see if you got any kind of questions or anything. But again, a recap on Tuesday, 
If it plays out the way the models say, we expect heavy snow before about you know, 6 or 7 a.m. from about mid, say, let's just paint a window, say midnight to 7 a.m. Tuesday. Expect, you know, moderate to heavy snow. Uh, could put down anywhere from, uh, say, three to six inches of snow. And then warmth would move in and uh, temperatures would then surge. I, I really think they're going to warm into the upper 30s, not the lower 40s like a lot of data. But, you know, by, by the time you're that far above freezing, it doesn't really matter that much. So we'll see heavy snow in the morning changing over to moderate to heavy rain mid morning to you know through the much of the rest of the day then backside snow Tuesday night into Wednesday and and refreeze possibilities on the roads that's for the Tuesday and then the storm as we get later in the week again uh, as I showed if if it plays out the way the GFS lays it out and uh, the other day other models are in pretty decent agreement with it um we could expect a significant winter storm Friday into Saturday that could end up being a reaching blizzard category. So let me uh, take a look at your comments here and see if there's a, uh, if we got any questions. Yeah, see, uh, Mike down here, I, he mentions he looks at tropical tidbits. That is a, a good free site to go to uh, to look at. I have I'm using Pivotal Weather, and uh, it's one of the subscriptions that I have. One in order to keep the uh, ads off of it, and two so that I can get this more localized view of of the models. So I do pay for uh, Pivotal Weather. To, to get those things, but Pivotal Weather in general is free as well. So if you ever want to, but just always, always, always be careful of going to the weather models and taking them verbatim. You have to know the meteorology behind it. But yeah, Pivotal Weather and Tropical Tidbits are both uh, very, very good uh, free model websites if you ever want to take a look at those. And Melissa Odom is asking about thunder snow. Yeah, maybe is uh, the way it's uh, advecting in that as quick as the change could happen. Uh, it, it actually wouldn't surprise me uh, to see that happen. And uh, Melissa runs one of our uh, awesome sponsors uh, too. So uh, well, I need to take another drink. My throat's drying out real bad. Okay, sorry about that. I don't normally do this much talking at one time. Hey Paige, how are you doing? Yeah, John's not gonna not gonna have much fun out in that, that mess. Hey Travis, see ya. Travis messages me a lot on, on my personal page and talking about the weather, especially winter time. No one to hear about hear from Travis a lot in the winter. Let's see. Hey, Becky, I'll, I'll definitely be praying for Ray. Um, Friday, I think, is just going to be rainy. And again, the bigger event for us is probably going to happen on Saturday, you know, Friday night into Saturday. So uh, I'll be uh, praying for Ray and uh, you know, praying for you guys to have safe travels uh, down there as well. And uh, my mom, Rebecca Murphy, is asking about about 1978. Now, I don't think we're going to be anywhere near that. But uh, it might be our biggest uh, snowstorm since 2013-14 uh, winter, though, uh, on Friday, if it uh, pans out. And back to Becky. Hey, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate you and Ray. You, know, you Becky and Ray Redding, they support this page. And so is uh, all, all of our sponsors, a few of you do. And to all of you who support this page uh, financially, thank you so much. And 
um, I kind of forgot what a pain in the behind it is to get everything coordinated for a page. Crystal Clear Weather is coming very soon, and you'll start getting your invites. Uh, for those of you who financially support the page, it'll be like uh, augmenting what gets done on this on this page, but I'll cover a larger area and uh, probably do more in the way of, of videos and information on that page. Um, Heather, Heather Coble, my sister, um, we need to worry about Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and then again Friday evening. Um, yes. And again, probably Monday night into Tuesday morning as well. Uh, will be, uh, be treacherous before things warm up. What does the 10, uh, Joe Baston asks, what does the 10 millibar difference mean in the storm track? The, the weaker the the storm is, unless you've got a dominant high pressure like a southeast ridge or something like that that's uh, acting as a guiding force, um, the, the higher the pressure is means the weaker the storm is, and it would probably shift you know, the storm. A 10 millibar difference might shift the storm 100 miles farther southeast. It's not going to want to turn as hard as what is what data has it. Like I showed you earlier where it was coming into southern Illinois, and then all of a sudden it deepened by six millibars and it turned it almost straight north toward Peoria. And if that doesn't happen, then the storm track stays stays lower and probably runs more toward southwestern Indiana instead of up into uh, into central Illinois. So ten millibars can make a make a big difference. Um April is asking you know, my neighbor across the street. She's asking how much do I think for Friday and Saturday? Um, it's it's hard to say. I could tell you what the GFS says, and the GFS is very heavy. It would be one of our biggest snowfalls ever. So officially, uh, we I think the last time we had a snow that significant was a storm that hit on January fifth of twenty fourteen, where we got. At 12 inches of snow, and it would be something similar to that, but not as barbarically cold as what that storm brought in, but still much colder than what we've been seeing. So, again, it's six days out, so it's hard to put a number on it just yet. My gut says an 8 to 12 inch snow is very realistic for Saturday. Hey, Joe, yeah, I, I really need to start doing more of these lives and, and engage you all more. I just, I get, you know, so busy and now I'm trying to get myself back into go, being back at work. And I just, I, that's been a big fat fail on my part, uh, doing some more lives and some more interactive uh, stuff with you all. So I, I, I do aim to rectify that. So, now I want to butcher your name here. My last comment that I see, I, I'm assuming it's either Tanya or Tanya Scott. Um, and thank you. I, I appreciate all of you trusting this page for your weather. And uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of you that you know either don't watch the uh, the news because they really only cater to Indianapolis, or or you just don't you don't get it. So I, I appreciate you trusting this page for your uh, for your weather, and I let me scroll back through here, make sure I haven't missed anybody. It looks like uh, viewership starting to drop a little bit. So I uh, hey, thank you, Randy. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions right off the bat. Let's see, there's a little bit more. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Um, he's one of my one of the longer followers of this page too. Um, yeah, and any of you who find value in this and you can support this page financially, the information's 
at the in a two pin post at the top of the Facebook page. And I, I very much appreciate it. And I appreciate those of you who do support the page. And Shelly Hauser, one one of the page supporters, I really appreciate you. And I Hey, thank you for the compliment, uh, Joe Green. Yeah, he says that this uh, page is more accurate than than any of the weather stations. Uh, I appreciate that a lot. Uh, so that means a lot. And you know, sometimes I kind of get a little bit discouraged doing the page, and so stuff like that, you know, helps helps keep me going. So uh, I really appreciate that. So I, I think with all that, I'll I'll just recap one more quick time, um, and then we'll and then I'll cut this off. I'm going to go, I'll go back to the GFS and kind of run you through the, the mess here again, real quick. Again, this is, you know, about one o'clock in the morning. Again, Madison County is right in here, a hit of heavy snow. I hate the way this page functions sometimes. Sometimes a pivotal weather page, when you try to click forward on things, it just decides it wants to drop the page. All right, so here we go. So again, just looking at GFS, quick hit of heavy snow, basically I-70 and north. Then it turns it all into rain as the it has the low intensifying and moving up through central Illinois. Then as it uh, moves through late in the day into the overnight, then the winds shift and they'll be strong. They'll be some gusts 30, 35 miles per hour that'll blow that snow because uh, that snow on the backside will be more of a dry snow. The snow on the fr uh, front side will be heavy, wet snow. So the backside will be more of the powdery snow. And, uh, and then that will blast on through and be out of here by Wednesday morning. Then we, then our eyes will turn to later in the week with this system that, again, probably starts off as rain for us for the most part on Friday. Maybe it's some mixing by Saturday in the wee hours through Probably afternoon, then we could be looking at heavy snow and a lot of wind that may reach blizzard criteria. And that storm would last most of the day on Saturday before it gets out of here. And again, you see all the tight ISO bars. That would be a, would be a blizzard if it's panned out. So that's kind of what we're looking at coming up Tuesday, Wednesday, and then next Saturday. We'll fine tune these uh, as we get into the day tomorrow once the storm is fully sampled and we'll see if the uh, data continues to say that it's going to uh, intensify a lot and turn turn hard to the northwest but even if it does that again we're still going to probably get snow impacts and then just a matter of getting snow and then turning it into a mess with rain and warmer temperatures so i'm going to cut this off right there and let me take a look one more thing here See, uh, hopefully, Madison. Hopefully, I got the you got on here in time to get the recap. If not, uh, Facebook will repost this as a video. About a half, I think it usually takes them about a half an hour for the live to become a video. And so, any you know, any of you who got into this late, you will be able to then go back here in a little bit and rewatch this as a as a video. All right, I think I'm going to cut it off right there. I thank all of you for getting on here and joining. And again, if you can support the page, please do so. And otherwise, thank you so much for trusting me for your uh, for your local weather information. And uh, Madison County is you know the area that doesn't get any attention unless you know there's something directly going on. So yeah, I, I take great pride in trying to give us because I'm forecasting for myself too. So I'm um, trying to give us the best information we can get for this county and really for surrounding counties as well. So I'm going to shut this off. Everybody, thank you for joining me. Have a great rest of your day, and I will post a forecast in a little bit. Have a great day. It's Michael Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates and Crystal Clear Weather.